Nope. Should I talk down to people and affect the list? <laughs> Obviously, you're very stupid. Look, man, all I ever wanted to be as a kid is a cowboy, a cop, or a soldier. Some people, you have to establish your quality by not what you know, but who you are. So don't say if it's too far, you can't do it. In 2006, I moved back home to Chicago after living in rural Indiana for two years. Upon arrival, I needed a job and landed a position at the largest wine store in North America, Sam's Wines and Spirits. I was told I'd be working with Sir Charles Stanfield, the first American to be inducted into the Knights of the Hills of Champagne, a prestigious group of wine enthusiasts responsible for upholding the image of the most celebrated wine in the world. I had thought I had made my way from cornfields to the elitist world of wine. I had thought I'd be working with a snobby wine scholar. I was wrong. CC is definitely the, the choice of the, uh, the connoisseur's <laughs> choice. My Aunt Mary drank CC. And when Aunt Mary, you, you knew when Aunt Mary drank too much CC, one, she started singing Calypso. I've been to the islands and the police don't even carry guns. Everyone's so beautiful. That's this much into the bottle. <laughs> I had gotten fired from a job and I had the benefits of um, unemployment, a nice place to stay. And one day my father was going to work and he asked me, boy, what, what you gonna do with your life? And I said, I don't know go back to school, you know, hang on. He said, your ass better get a job. And I said, yes, sir. And I went to an employment agency and bought a job, and it was at the Chicago Wine Company in Niles, Illinois. And that's how I got started in the wine industry. I went from Chicago Wine Company after I worked uh, eight, eight, nine years there. I went to Sam's. I thought I was a pistol. I thought I knew everything because I learned so much about one end of wine. When I got to Sam's, I found out I didn't know anything about wine because different countries, different uh, climates, terroir, uh, what grape is important to which country. I was really impressed with what I saw there, but I was working upstairs unloading trucks. I, I think Sam's at the time was the best resource in everything, spirits and wine you, you can go to. If we didn't have it, it wasn't released yet, or it doesn't exist in, in, this, this, in, in, in this hemisphere. We, we had it. Sam's was the, the entity that taught me wine. The wine itself, it, it's a never ending, wonderful thing. If you got a good group of friends and you could enjoy a nice glass of champagne with them, I can guarantee that there will be harmony and bliss in that room. I want people to be more realistic to themselves rather than followers or, or leaders, just uh, to share and enjoy. I've bestowed a knighthood for my work in Champagne in 2002. My title would be Chevalier Odeur de Couture de Champagne. That knocked me out because I'm a Chicago guy and when they told me I, they went, they called me from Europe and they were kind of talking about like we want to bestow a knighthood in their broken English and stuff. I, gave, I basically thought they were fucking with me and I hung up, I really did. And and I went back to work, and some friends of mine from New York called. Charles, did you somebody from France call you and talk about this great honor that they're bestowing upon you? And I'm kind of like, you know, somebody called, but I thought they were like goofing with me, because who do I who do I know? I, I mean, I know a lot of people, but it, as far as somebody giving me, so who the fuck do I know? Rising to the ground, not quite to the morning mass. All the humanity and all the fans in 2008, a crippled economy took Sam's as its victim. I decided to pursue my dream of being a filmmaker 
and Charles ended up at Evolution Wines, a humble store located in Humboldt Park, Chicago. This is the Vigna Borgia Grenache, and it's, it's from Spain. And Grenache is a great varietal, it's a Rhone varietal predominantly in Cote de Rhone. But uh, on its own, it's got some wonderful fruit to it. Fairly good tannic structure. That's the, the part of wine that gives it a little grip on the palate. But it's not so dry where it's a chore to drink. It, and it's not a lot of money either. He's great with customers as far as helping them with, with wine selections and just being a, a funny guy and engaging the customer. Very delicious. Yeah. Thank you for all the All I want is you to be happy. That's I'm, all I'm, I want. I'm, I'm happy. Okay. I'm a happy girl. See, that's all I want. That's right. We're happy. And, and happiness, let it spread. I mean, he can't lift cases like he used to, which is fine. I don't, I don't need him to do that. I can do that. I want his knowledge. So I'm grateful for his knowledge here. He doesn't take kindly to bullshit. Um, he, he, he gives you the truth and expects the same in return. He tells it like it is. And I think that's where people think he, he can be abrasive. I think a lot of people who go for the sommelier test sometimes are ego-driven rather than sharing their skills with the public. At that point, when you elevate yourself up, you're not sharing opinions as much as you're issuing dictum. And then to put a point on it like you're a doctor, you'll say, I'm a sommelier. When a few people meet a certain person who is repugnant, they don't have to blurt out, I'm an asshole. People will know by their being. Old white dudes don't think that Charles Stanfield could have afforded to drink the wine that they want. It's all the marketing, the PR, everybody trying to make it glamorous. It's not that people who are actually farming and making the product. Like, I've met people from Burgundy who are like, amazingly down to earth and you know cursing and spitting and fantastic but then the people who actually sell their products come in in an armani suit and a pinky ring and are a real pain in the ass wine for the people is a ever-changing concept on learning and enjoying wine for average people who are interested about wine to learn it without feeling that they were beneath somebody or somebody should tell them how to experience it. Uh, I think that a lot of times, as I mentioned earlier, wine is elitist, over-advertised, and very ill-informed. I would call myself an iconoclast. There's nothing maverick about an opinion. Everybody, good or bad, will have them. But I, I'm the guy who stands up and yells, that's a lie. I mean, it's all the years of what he's been doing. It's the relationships that he's been able to forge with these houses that are some of the most elitist pricks that you could ever hope to meet, who would walk into Sam's when I worked there and wouldn't pay a lick of attention to me. But, you know, Charles is able to forge relationships with them. No mastering it, these masters of wine. There's no mastering it. It's evolving, and, and this is what we want to do with it. Uh, and and in, in my learning, or, or my, my, my earlier learning of wine, it, it was still so much fun to, to find a new country and explore it in a glass. And that, that's, uh, that's pretty important. It, 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 try your own true opinions. All right, I'll taste a little Sauvignon Blanc and so will my friend, but then we can't buy it because we're buying beer. You don't have to buy it. But then it. I'll remember it and come here. Pardon me, my Chicago Street baby doll. You don't have to buy it. He's got the Charles Stanfield swagger, yeah. which is, you know, uh, it, that can only come from traveling the world and meeting all these people who've made the stuff and being wildly intelligent and intuitive. I, I want you to explore the essence of the wine first rather than who makes it and, and their philosophy on it, you know, guiding rather than selling. Wine is not a badge to wear, a rich man's prop, or a means to separate by class. It is for the people. It enriches one's life learning and conquers others' fears when sharing your knowledge. Becoming friends with Charles definitely taught me when you open a bottle of wine, 
You're never going to know what you're going to get. It feels like I've done one good thing, and then to do any good thing to me is a lot. When you have people coming in to see you, you to me it's, it's I've done one good thing.